oh yeah, I'm a Michael Jordan. No, you're not. You're not Michael Jordan. Are you all Grandmaster in Overwatch? And if the answer is no, why not? I don't want to sit there and get on my, I'm going to just, I'm going to have fun. Of course you suck. Because you look at what you're aiming for. Do you have any athlete mentalities you like, such as Mamba? No, not off the top of my head. I think there's a lot of athlete mentalities that can help. But the problem is, is that you have these like outliers, like, you know, Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan. We had almost like an abusive level mentality. Like they're so like unhealthily. And people look at that and they romanticize it, which is not only not exactly something you want to romanticize, but also most people just don't have that level of dedication. And that's not a bad thing. You know, like that, that's like almost mentally ill level. And they're like, oh yeah, I'm a Michael Jordan. No, you're not. You're not Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was, that guy was crazy, man. Like not, he just, he had a level of dedication and intensity that most of us don't have. And that's good. Right. So for me is I'm more interested in people that are great at what they do, but aren't obsessed, you know, because I don't think you have to be obsessed to be great. It's very sexy to compare yourself to Michael Jordan, but it's like, bro, you don't want to be Michael Jordan. You know, my, basketball was everything to him for like a long period of his life. You know what I'm saying? And he was also um, obsessed about winning, very intense, very toxic, very tough. You know, and it was a great winner as a result. And there's a lot of great things that you can learn. There's aspects of, of Michael Jordan I think you should aspire to be. I think the confidence that I will make this shot, even if you're not going to, right? Like having the willingness to be like, have confidence in your process, have confidence in yourself. Um, you just love the game as much as that. I think that if you're ever going to be great at anything, those are things. But I also think there's aspects that, you know, you're not going to be able to do, you know? How about coaches in those sports? I think there's, I have more in common with coaches, I think. Um, because I, I've also spent more time studying the coaches. I think people like Phil Jackson are uh, people that I, I, I like. Uh, John Wooden, uh, Paul Brown. Paul Brown, John Wooden, Phil Jackson are all phenomenal coaches that were very successful. Some of the best coaches really of all time in any sport, anywhere. And they were all very balanced, uh, pretty balanced human beings that understood, that worked with a lot of different players, worked with some great players, worked with some not so great players. I think there's a lot to learn from, from those coaches. I don't know if you have to be obsessed to be the best, but I definitely think it helps. It's, it's honestly such a trap too, because it's like, there's a lot of people I know that are like so obsessed about like winning and getting good and being the best. They like kind of screw themselves over because they, they like, not that they work too hard, but that they, it's like leads to like mental instability and they stop enjoy, and, and also burn out because they stop like doing it because they just enjoy doing it. You know, I think the most important thing to mastery is fun. To be honest, like if you're not, you need time, but if you don't enjoy it, then you're not going to have fun doing it. And be, so if you're not going to have fun doing it, you're either going to avoid it or you're going to make yourself do it, which can only last for so long. It's not even a question of like mental toughness. That's one of the most overused, abused terms ever. Put it this way. Why are you, this is the analogy I always use. You guys in chat, are you guys bodybuilders? Are you guys like 9% body fat? Are you all grandmaster in Overwatch? And if the answer is no, why not? I'm not asking if you are exercise. I'm not asking if you're Diamond in Overwatch. I'm asking, why are you not Grandmaster? Why are you not 9% body fat? Is it a lack of dedication or is it just not important to you? I'm in shape, all right? I compete. I do a lot of athletics. I travel around the Eastern Seaboard. I have, I have a couple of rings behind me back there. I won some Super Bowl championships. Uh, my team that I played actually played in Dallas Cowboys Stadium and won a championship there. Um, I do a lot of sprint work. I've hit Grandmaster. I've done all those things. But why don't I play Grandmaster anymore? Because I don't really care that much about playing Overwatch. What's more important to me is being really good at like the videos and the coaching. That's what's more important to me right now. Right now. Um, I'm also, you know, I lift weights and I sprint, but I'm not near as jacked as some of my friends who actually got into coaching or got into coaching, got into lifting. Because I just, it's not really my goal, right? I want to be in shape. I want to be strong. I want to be fast, but I don't really care about being 8% body fat. I don't know what body percent body fat I'm actually at. It might be at like 10, 11, something like that. But it's just not important to me right now. You know, there's been times in my life where my priorities have shifted. I think that's, that's just the nature of growth is that humans, we always, our priorities are always like shifting. You know, like you know, right now, content's more important than me than competitive coaching. 
Overwatch League was the most important thing to me for a while. Um, before that, it was my mixed martial arts career, you know, teaching and coaching that. So for you, it, it's, it's, here's what I put it this way. I think everybody needs to have, there is a certain, like maybe this is a little bit of egotistical, not egotistical, but a little bit, a little bit of making some assumptions here. But I have the conviction that there are some things that need to be soft priorities for everybody. I think you need to be in shape, eating healthy. Does that mean that you can't eat sugar? No. Does it mean that you need to be lifting weights every day? No. Does it mean to be running an hour every day? No. But I think everybody every day should be active. 10, 15 minutes move. And what that is, is up to you. Take a walk, lift weights, on a bike, do a yoga class. I think it's just normal human health. It's for your best to be healthy and to eat as close to real foods as you possibly can. But that looks different for every person, but depending on your level of importance. And I think every person should be involved socially with friends and family to some extent. And then I also think that everybody should apply themselves to at least something, whether that's taking care of other people, whether that's your job, whether that's uh, you know, a skill or a hobby. I think not being obsessed, but applying yourself to it, being good at something. It builds confidence is being good at something. I apply myself to a lot of things. I like being good at a lot of things. I like learning about a lot of things. But I also think that there's like a certain line where like, you don't need to be the best. It's not, Michael Jordan isn't a better person. Like you random person in chat right now, you are not a better person than Michael Pearl or Michael Pearl, Michael Jordan. My, you are not inferior to Michael Jordan. There is, there, the, the, you might be and probably are a better person than Michael Jordan. Nobody knows who you are. I say that obviously that's not really the case, but there might not be, a, I feel a lot fewer people know who you are, but you are probably a superior person than Michael Jordan the people that you've impacted positively, the friends you've made, the things that you've accomplished, even the small things, right? It doesn't, there's, there's not a sense of a hierarchy, right? Again, we tend to like put these people on a pedestal. How do you prevent burnout from the gym? I've continuously went to the gym for a few years, but I find myself feeling burnout, wanting to go because you're doing too much. You're doing too much. The biggest mistake people make when they try to get into shape is they do too much. You don't diet. You should never diet. I do not recommend dieting for anybody. You don't go to the gym and you work out for an hour. You go to the gym and you bring a book or you bring something that you've been wanting to watch and you walk in the treadmill for 20 minutes and you do a couple of curls and you go home and you do it two or three times a week. And on the days you don't go to the gym, you take a 10 minute walk around your neighborhood. That's it. And then you stick with that. That's, that's what you need to do. That, you're burning out because you're biting off more than you can chew and you're making it a ne negative experience. I know how that feels. I know how that feels. When I first started working out, I worked, I gritted my teeth because I got made fun of by my friends, meaning well, but I wanted to play high school football. I played football in middle school. I was a really skinny kid. I did really well in middle school football. I was actually in the all-star team, um, but I had been a few years and I wanted to play high school football. We go to a high school football game. I'm like, I'm going to play with them next year. My friends are like, kind of laughing like, oh, we don't want you to play. You're too skinny. So I'm like, you know, it's like the, the motivational, you know, dramatic music playing in the background. So I got up at 6 a.m. every morning for like seven, eight months. I gritted my teeth and I did it. And it got easier as I built the habit, but it never really got to a point where I enjoyed it. And I was, and it was like this for years, for a lot of times. Like I, I, I struggled, like it was hard for me. And, and the, the most fun I've had working out was like the last two years when I, I made it easier for me to work out because my stuff is in the garage. I saved up for years to buy stuff because I didn't want to go to the gym. I freaking hated going to the gym. Nobody likes going to the gym unless you're like, you're crazy. Nobody wants to get in their clothes, get in the car and go to the gym. So what I do, I made it easy. I made it easy. I made it easy to go to the gym because I have to walk, open a door. And I made it easy to sprint because I just go outside. I, we literally, when we were shopping for houses in this area, which, by the way, the, the market was amazing. It was, so, it was literally half the price of the property where we were living. Anyway, we were looking for yards where I could sprint in. It has to be easy. I cut down my volume, cut any wasted time, anything that I didn't like, and I trained for what I wanted to do. So I'm like, I'm doing a lot of football stuff, right? So I trained more around things that would help me to perform well in football because that was more motivating for me to do and less just general stuff. And then with things that I wanted to do, but I didn't enjoy doing. Like I got a bit of an ego, right? I like taking care of myself. I like having biggish muscles, right? So do you know when I do arms? Do you know when I do arms? I freaking bring the 50 pound dumbbells. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I can curl 50s easily. 
right? I'm a big boy. And I do freaking, I do 50 pound bicep curls, sets of, uh, you know, set, seven to eight reps, four or five times while we're playing a board game. I'm sitting there playing a board game doing bicep curls. Why? Because it's easy. It's easy. I don't want to sit there and get on my, I'm going to just, I'm going to have fun. So I'm hanging out with Pepper, you know, and, and we're just doing, a, you know, some bicep curls or some shoulder press, or maybe I'll do like, uh, like I don't do a lot of abs because a lot of, I think abs are kind of overrated. Uh, if you want abs, you should lose weight. You should lose fat. Uh, and generally on most moves, uh, if they're total body sprinting, push-ups, chest, anything is going to, so, but I'll okay to do some supplementary core work. I do it while I'm, while I'm, while I'm watching something or when I'm playing a board game, you know? Again, it, you have to make, if you want to have it to stick, you got to make it easy. You got to make it easy. And I'm, I'm not saying that where you're at here is where you're going to stay. You might start with a daily walk and, and, and that gets, and you start to enjoy it. And maybe you add a little bit more and you add a little bit more and you add a little bit more and you add a little bit more. And all of a sudden you're doing a lot of things and it doesn't feel so bad. You actually, it's all right. You know, I'm not saying that working out is always going to be like easy, right? It, it's going to take a level of dedication and commitment for sure. But you need, to, you need to bring the bar down to where it's not such a big ask. You need to be honest with yourself. I have this happen to me all the time. People come to my coaching sessions and they're like, you know, what are your goals? I want to hit Grandmaster, all right? Well, how much are you playing per day? Well, right now, you know, for the last couple of weeks, I've been really burned out. I've only been playing you know, two or three times a week, you know, and, but I, I'm, I'm, right now I'm going to stick with five hours a day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, like, please, do you, you, you know exactly how long that's going to last. You're stalking about the person that's struggling with commitment and motivation and then jumping to like the biggest loser type of commitment and grinding five hours a day. And I'm, I wasn't, I'm not, I'm not, it's not, a, the, it's like the biggest loser dieting mindset where it's like all or nothing. And it's such a toxic mindset, you know? You have to be so much more like, it's so, like you need it. Like, and I'm not, like, if you guys have read Atomic Habits, it has like a similar concept, but it's like the whole mindset is just like, you need to build like habits. You need to make it like, yeah, you have to start slow. You have to start slow. And I think also like, here's the other thing too, is like when people talk about starting slow, people underrate slow because it's not just that you have to start slow so that you can get big. Sometimes slow is good enough. Sometimes slow is good enough. Sometimes playing, you, if you play, I promise you, there are, I, I, I have sometimes think about this sometimes. I actually think playing an hour a day of Overwatch, if you played it with full intensity, I actually think that some people could hit Grandmaster with an hour of Overwatch a day. So you start with an hour of Overwatch so that you could build an hour and a half, you could build two hours. Build. I actually think it's possible with an hour of Overwatch day to hit Grandmaster. I think it's possible. I don't know if everybody could do it. I think you'd have to have like a pretty good mindset and pretty good patience and pretty good energy for it, but it's possible. So sometimes starting slow, you could finish slow. You could just stay slow the rest of the you could do You could do a 15 minute walk and a, a, every day and a 20 minutes of work, lifting weights once a week for the rest of your life. And that's pretty good. You, you could start slow and stay there for the rest of your life. And that's probably pretty good. You, don't, you might not even need to start slow to get big. You might just freaking stay slow. And that's better than where you're at right now. I like that you're not admonishing the viewer for lacking discipline, but for choosing to try to add a toxic habit and expecting it to work. Exactly, exactly. Stop looking at things like a mental toughness standpoint. That is true to an extent. I, I got in trouble on Twitter. <laughs> I got in trouble on Twitter for saying something about like, you know, some of you guys overthink thing. I said something about like, oh, some of you guys are just lazy. And people are like, oh, there's no such thing as lazy, you know? And I understand where they're coming from. And I actually need to do more research on that. I think there's a little bit of laziness sometimes. I do think so. But I don't think it's all, you need to do, there's no such thing as laziness. And there's no such thing, and, and mental toughness, and you just need to grind through it, grit your teeth. I think, I think those are both false. I think they're both false. I think you have to you ask yourself, why are you not taking care of your health? The answer is, you're a little lazy, but also the answer is also that you're asking way too much. When we think about fixing your health, that's a very overwhelming thing. And, and, or why are you not Grandmaster and Overwatch or any other topic, right? I'm just using health because it's a good example. And it's a little bit of laziness and it's a lot of asking too much. The problem is, is everybody focuses on the laziness and nobody wants to focus on making it too hard. It's easy to just mindlessly apply yourself to something. It's hard to think and be like, you know what? What's something consistent that I could do to build up to that? You know, right? Laziness can be sometimes confused with a lack of motivation being the thing that you want to do. Exactly. Which is why I asked earlier, how come you guys aren't like 5% body fat bodybuilders or Grandmaster in Overwatch? Because some of you guys just don't care about that. And that's not a bad thing. Like I said, everybody needs to be relatively in shape, active, 
eating healthy and being social, applying yourself to something. Doesn't mean to be great at it, but applying yourself to something. I think that's, that's just a rule for humanity overall. If you're not taking care of yourself, talking with human beings and applying yourself to something, you need to get your butt in gear. But if you say that, yes, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm pretty good with my diet and I am active, then don't worry. That, 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 like, and the problem is, is that people that aren't doing those things, they look at that like, oh, I need to get into shape as in like, I need to look like the Rock Johnson. And that's just such a, it's like, oh, no wonder it's overwhelming, you know? For me, the reason I don't apply myself enough is because I don't believe in myself enough. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing too. And that, well, that's the, see, that's a trap. So I don't believe in myself because I don't apply myself, but that's a, that's a circle. So you know how you have to break the cycle and you know how you break the cycle? It's not overshooting because if you're like, oh, I'm not good at anything I do, so I don't believe in myself. You're right. You're, 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 you, you suck. You've done nothing worth mentioning. You're worthless. Total waste of time, right? And so you're like, well, I need to do something, right? And then you go and you try and do something like, I'm going to go to Grandmaster this season or I'm going to lose 50 pounds. Or I'm going to get up at five o'clock in the morning. And, and it's like, oh, it's ridiculously hard. And then you fail. Shocker, right? And you're like, ah, see, I suck, right? Well, duh. Of course you suck because you look at what you're aiming for. You don't even have to, you don't have the skill to do that. Nobody has, most people don't have the skill to do that. So stop, so stop aiming. People are like, shoot for the stars. If you miss, you'll hit the clouds. Bull crap, man. Aiming for the stars and only the stars and is going to, you're going to fall to your death. <laughs> you're going to feel terrible. Build confidence slowly. This, this is something that I learned even in martial arts. Like it's amazing how many unconfident kids start as like these white belts, you know, and these eight year old, eight year, nine year old, 10 year old, and they're quiet. They don't want to talk and they're scared, you know, and they're looking for their mom in the lobby, you know, and, and, and over time they get more confident what they're doing and they get the first stripe in the belt. And, you know, the whole belt system is, is really almost more for like visual steps, you know, and, and every time they get that belt, you know, the confidence, the confidence, confidence, and they don't just get confidence because, Hey, I'm a higher belt. Although kids are kind of crazy about that. But they also they know that I am better today than I was when I started. And it's through incremental improvements. Incremental improvements. If you put a white belt in there and try to train black belt stuff, they freaking be crying, they go home and they feel that they suck. You gotta start with incremental periods. What do you do when you're in a period which has a huge impact in your life? How do you keep moving through it? Like a really huge impact in your future. You're talking about like a key moment where, like, hey, if I get my GPA up, I get a scholarship or I don't. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, bro, I, I know how you feel because I had these moments in, in when I was trying to get for Overwatch League, because let's be honest, guys, Overwatch League coach positions were few and far between. They didn't trial from them very often. And it felt like a lot of teams didn't know what they're talking about. So every time I went for an Overwatch League trial, I was like, this is it. Like, this is, this is my chance, like right here. And so there's like this immense pressure, but let me, let me share with you a little story. So when I had the whole like Paris eternal trial, I've talked about that many times ago flopped. That was, I felt like it wasn't even my fault. So it was frustrating. You know, I had, I, 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 I retired. I retired. I was done. I missed the opportunity. There's no sugarcoating it. You missed it. You, you, you've messed it up. I mean, it, even if it's not even your fault, like I felt like it wasn't even my fault. You missed it. It didn't happen anymore. As badly as I felt in that moment, what happened afterwards was I took, I made some of the most progress of my understanding of Overwatch knowledge during that period of time of failure. It then progressed afterwards to doing something that I had no idea. So let's put it this way. If you're, the, if you're missing like this one big opportunity to do this, let's not lie. That's a big opportunity. You need to, you need to hope that you're going to get it. But if you don't get it, don't pretend that this is the only thing that you are. That This is literally going to define your entire life right here. I think that's, especially when you're young, it's really easy to fall into that trap because a lot of young people are OTPs where it's like, I need to get to this college. I need to join this team. But the reality of the situation is, is that experience is going to permanently pivot you to something else, which might be even better. And you don't even know it yet. It might be worse, but it's, it's still an opportunity. So do the best in that situation, even though it feels like a one-all done-all, because I promise you it's not. It might be a one-all done-all in this small headspace, but it doesn't mean a one-all done-all for you as a person, because you as a person are so much more complicated than that. You may not know it yet, but you are. Even with the whole London Spitfire thing. Oh no, I wasn't able to be in LA. They had to drop roster. They had, they had to downsize. They picked up Khan. It was like a low point for me, right? But at, at, I didn't know it at the time, but that opportunity allowed me to get a running start for Overwatch 2, which is where I am today. If that had not happened, I might not be here today. And I wouldn't trade my position for anywhere else. I'm not saying that bad things aren't going to happen. They're going to happen. But you, some things will be like a one-time be-all in that headspace, but it doesn't mean it's a one-time be-all 
for you as a person or for your future overall? How do you deal with the expectations of the people around you? You see, that's the hard part. That's the worst part about it. I, I'm not going to share... Um, I'm not going to share what it's about, but that really hits close to home right now, actually. Because there's something recently that happened in my life and in somebody else I know uh, where there was a lot of expectations being placed. Uh, and it, it, if I let it affect me and it made me feel guilty because I felt like it wasn't just my decision about something. It was, I felt like I was letting down people that I cared and it it felt like this immense pressure. And then I had to realize that assuming that you're not doing something stupid <clears throat> and not being lazy and irresponsible and you know, you know yourself, you need to know yourself, know thyself, you know, you need to know, you know, your, your intentions and your motivations and, and the way that you're applying yourself. I had to realize that nobody has more investment in my life than more than I do. Nobody has more investment in my life than I do. Nobody fully understands. That doesn't mean that good advice isn't there. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't, you know, whether it's your parents, your friends, your family, but at a certain point in time, nobody has the same level of investment in your choices and your future as you do. That's where you have to try to communicate. I mean, guys, there's how many movies have been made about this? You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, you know, you know, the pressure, you know, come on. It's like, it's like a Disney movie, you know, you just want to disappear. Exactly. There's so much pressure. You, you have to understand they'll they get over it, that they will get over it. And if, that they are, if they are the type of people that are worth your time, that are worth your support, and are, that, are really, that really care about you, they will get over it and they'll support you nonetheless. It would be far worse for you to be pressured by the people that you care about and to making a decision that you don't want to make than it would be for you to disappoint them because you did what you wanted to do. Because you have to live with those consequences. They don't have to live with the consequences. You have to live with those consequences. Your challenge is to live with the consequences of whatever decision that you make. And also to make sure that you are making a decision that makes the most sense. There are some people that I know that are making really stupid decisions in their lives right now. And I wish I could shake them and be like, what are you doing? But ultimately, they're the ones that have to live with it. So if you know yourself and you know your motivations and you know this is the best decision for me or I'm going to do the best that I can and other people have to live, you're the one that has to live the consequences, not them. It's very difficult not to live vicariously through other people. So you need to sympathize with their plight, but you have to think as clearly as you possibly can. And I know that's very difficult to do. I know exactly how you feel. And I know everybody, and not just me, I know everybody in chat knows exactly how you feel. Maybe not to the same intensity, right? We all have different experiences, but we know what it's like. I sympathize with you, mate. But this too shall pass, you know? This too shall pass. And if they're the type of people that are worth your time, then they'll support you. No worries. And I'm sorry that there isn't always a solution. I think one of the things that um, I've learned the older I've got is that so many solutions to like these problems are building the mental toughness. Okay, I hate using that term, but the patience to just sometimes let things go. Because sometimes like, you know, you're a, you're a high schooler and you're in college and you're like, you want the solution to everything. And sometimes there just isn't a solution. Sometimes it's just your ability to live or push through a difficult time. That's the difference. This sounds super corny and super nerdy, but whatever, whatever this kind of stuff happens, you know what I think about? I think about freaking hobbits from Lord of the Rings. How they go through all that like psychological trauma and frustration and terrible things. And they just bounce right back. And they're like, you know, what's for dinner? You know, like, I think that's something in many ways that we can like aspire to be. All right, cheers, PK. I think that's something that, that that's like, that's like something that we should aspire to be like a little bit, you know? We're spiraling now, th therapist. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of this stuff just, you know, you, you have a lot of life experiences with, with, with failure and, and trying to accomplish things. And you work with a lot of, the other thing too is like when you're coaching is you're like, you not only have your own aspirations and goals, you're also running alongside other people. You know, it's like a highway, you know, people get on, you coach with them and they get off and you know, you don't talk. And so you, you, you kind of like, you get the experience of like people chasing things. That's like my job. It's people pursuing things, whether it's an Overwatch League or outside of Overwatch League. It's people pursuing goals. It's like, how do you talk? How do you deal with that? You know, if you haven't watched Lord of the Rings, I recommend it. It's good. It's, it's very enjoyable. The books are obviously great. I've read them many times. The books, uh, the movies are, are a pretty solid representation uh, of, the, of the books while having some differences as well.
the, 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 the movies are a great example of, the, obviously the books as well, but the movies are a great example of when you love something, it turns out great. And you could even see it with the making of many of those movies that, you know, Peter Jackson and the, really the whole cast and crew were like, was so obsessed with it. You know, they really enjoy like not just obsessed, right? But they really enjoyed their work. They enjoyed doing it. It was hard work. It took a lot of commitment, a lot of mental toughness, but they loved Lord of the Rings. If they hated Lord of the Rings, even if they'd had the mental toughness to push through it, it would have been a garbage trilogy. Apparently a high school senior that somehow got depressed because one of my close friends got an MT. I meditated and applied, but somehow I feel like I failed. Oh yeah, it is hard to not compare yourself to other people. Especially when it's somebody close to you, mate. Ah, oh, man. Because you're like, you know, they're your peers. You know, they're your peers. You have a lot in common with them. And all of a sudden they're like, bam, they succeeded in some aspects. You know, I, I mean, look at what I'm doing, guys. I'm wearing freaking, look at this. I'm wearing Christmas pajamas and a sweatshirt from 2012 with a torn thing, coaching a dead game, bruh, making a lot less money than 99% of my peers and my friends. You know, I'm a failure, right, guys? I'm coaching video games, you know? But I don't care. I don't care. A lot of my friends, like, here's the thing. A lot of you, a lot of you know this. A lot of you guys know this. Um, I have a bachelor's in finance. And I had, a, I had an internship set up with Edward Jones Finances almost 10 years ago. And I started in, in martial arts and I chose not to. Now, I, I'm a hard worker. I grew up, my dad was a teacher. I was a straight A student. You know, hard work was always like really prioritized in my life, whether it was sports or whatever. But my dad was also very supportive and encouraged me to do you know, what I enjoy. And I would not trade my position for the world at all. I chose to finish my bachelor's degree. Thankfully, I wasn't in debt. Um, very cheap college. Um, it was not a very prestigious college. And, and, and I went into mixed martial arts because I love working with kids and I love teaching mixed martial arts, not just because I love martial arts, but because I felt like I could help kids. And so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now because there's not a better feeling in the world like feeling that you actually have an impact and that you like your job. I consider myself lucky. I see some of my friends are making a lot more money than me and they're a lot more successful than me. They have bigger houses than I have. But you know what? I'm making a living. I'm making a living. You know, I have a house, I'm not in debt. I'm able to put a little bit of money away into a Roth IRA for retirement. I have Christmas presents under the tree. I have friends, I have family, I love my job. I sometimes love my job so much that I have, to, I have trouble not thinking about my job, which is the problem. And most importantly, I actually feel like I get to help people. And if you, I'm telling you guys, if you don't feel like you're having a positive impact with your job, I don't give a rip if you're a janitor, if you're a CEO or whatever. If you don't feel like you're having a positive impact on somebody, I think you're missing out. I, I really, I really think that that's, that's what, that's why I, I feel like I feel a lot of satisfaction with my job. And, then, and th there's studies on that too. I swear where it's like, you know, people's job satisfaction is not correlated with like the money they make necessarily. Although that is a correlate to a certain extent. But a lot of it's like feeling like they're actually doing something. They have a purpose, you know? And when you have a purpose of like why I'm here or like what am I supposed to be doing, that is a great feeling. Martial arts specifically. So I wasn't much of a martial arts kid. I never did martial arts. I thought martial arts was stupid because I kind of grew up when karate was still a thing. And no offense to the karate practitioners, but it was like the 80s, like music. And it, it's, it's better than nothing, but I knew kids that I could beat up, <laughs> um, even though they knew all these like fancy karate kicks, you know? The great thing about martial arts is because people associate martial arts with discipline. So when people sign their kid up for soccer, you freaking kick the ball, you blow the whistle, and then, you know. But when people sign their kid up for martial arts, they're a lot more open to like, hey, my kid needs help with confidence, or he's getting bullied in school, or he's not disciplined, he doesn't listen to me. So you had like a lot more opportunity to like not just teach the art, which was fun. You know, the Muay Thai and BJJ is really fun. But like you got to like work with them, their personal, their personal like life. Sometimes, hello kitty, she's walking in my lap. And so because of that, you got to have a lot more impact beyond just the sport. Um, in fact, the the organization I worked for was Beyond the Belt Martial Arts in New Hampshire. I was the head instructor. I don't even know if there's still the website. I feel like the bag is calling me. Well, see, that's the thing is it's like I, I'm I'm not also not gonna all here to be like you know chasing the bag is bad because you know what you do a lot of freaking amazing things with the bag. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of my friends that make a lot more money than me. They donate a ton to charity. They're able to spend, they are able to basically, like, they, you know what they do is they work, they go home, and because they make so much money, they do whatever the frick they want with their families. They do all these, all these expensive vacations. 
and they go to freaking Disney and they buy all these expensive gifts and they and they give like I said they give a lot of charity. That that dude, bro, you could do a lot with the bag, bro. The bag, it's not chase the bag, bro. Chase the bag. Make more money so you can give it away and spend it and doing other things. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people that, uh, you know, they, they don't love their job, but they just do it. And, you know, they go home and they apply themselves when their job's done. I'm fortunate enough to where I like my job, but honestly, there's downsides to that too, because uh, it means that it's, it's, I don't have as much time because I'm self-employed and I apply myself a lot. You know, like I don't have as much time as I'd like to do other things where some people just, they do the nine to five, they go home and they don't, they do whatever the frick they want. You know, and they, they help people that way, or they, they hang out with their family or they spend time with friends, you know? Height surgery? Okay, listen, buddy. Listen, we've had such a nice conversation. And height surgery? Oh my gosh. You wouldn't say that to me at land. You wouldn't say that to me at land. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. You want to say that to me at land, bud? Huh? I'd be, I'd be legit towering over you, bro. You wouldn't be able to sniff my kneecaps, much less anything else. I am average height. Look, I'm average height. Average. But like, you know, just because you're not six foot doesn't mean you're not average height. No, I'm not five foot seven. I'm taller than that. Mid twenties is such a weird existential time in life. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that I think there's existential dread <laughs> from like seventeen until like thirty. I swear for the average person, because I remember being in like a late teenager and being like, "Dude, I don't know what I'm doing." And I was like, "I don't know what I'm doing for work. Like, I don't even know what I do. I changed my degree. I don't even know what I'm doing for a college degree. Like, crap, dude. Like, what am I doing? With my life? I didn't know." And I wake up today and I'm like, I still don't know what the heck I'm doing. What if Overwatch just goes boom, you know? Like, what am I going to do, you know? So, you know, I, I'm always thinking about those things because I, I like having a bit of a plan. But, you know, there's been moments like that in my life before. I'm six foot, but I'm small in spirit. Yeah. Five, seven and a quarter. Listen, but who's counting, you know? That quarter inch matters a lot. What is that, you know? That's a lot right there. You do a lot with that much. Don't, don't clip that out of context, guys. I, it's already happened twice today. Please don't. I was taller than you at the age of 10. Okay, bro. <laughs> I'm just, I knew, I knew you guys were going to come. I don't know why. See, the thing is, is here's the thing. If I don't draw attention to it, it doesn't matter. You guys are going to see it anyway. If I do draw attention to it, at least I can laugh. Ha, 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 ha. And then it happens anyway, you know, because it's going to happen anyway. I, I said something earlier. I didn't even notice that I said it. And people were like, oh, look what he said. Ah. So it's like, I just give up. You know, it's, you guys are too fast on it. You're like, you're like rats, you know, you're like, it's like a Pavlovian dogs, you know, it's like, I say something, ring, 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 you're like, I don't even know how you notice these things. It's just be listening to what I'm saying, not like, wait, never mind. that doesn't make any sense.